Good morning. Come. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello. I'm trying to coerce my cat over here so she could uh, <laughs> to humanize the world. I love it when people show their pets on these things, but she's squeamish. She's just checking me out. All right, never mind. Good morning to everybody. So look, I want to tell you, um, you know, what's in store, and um, I don't want to take very long about it. Let me just make sure I got a, a picture, see who's here. So it's um, finals day. And it's a kind of fun final. It's not like an exam kind of final. Uh, it's some animation. And um, here's the gist of it. Uh, we spent the last two classes, uh, you know, just making some contact with P5, um, which included just a dash of how uh, programmers make things move, you might remember, uh, with that little business with uh, the ellipse that was just simply rising up. And that was impure code. Um, and sure enough, there is an overlap between the coding world and um, the animators world. You know, strangely enough, uh, just for the record, um, since a lot of this for me started via web design, you know, like what can I put on a website, uh, which led me on a really interesting, you know, path of other options, including animation. You know, at first, uh, it did involve quite a bit of programming m motion because I was doing commercial websites that just did cool things. You know, instead of a regular link, maybe the links would come up to the follow your mouse around or, or uh, different ways a portfolio of imagery might pass and um, that type of thing. So there was more reason to code motion. But um, that kind of went out of fashion for a while for all kinds of reasons, at least outside of gaming and, and stuff like that. Um, but there is a conversation between the two. I want to get back to animation though. So we spent this quarter, uh, the lengthiest periods on a couple of subjects. And one of the ones that got the most days was the animation sequence. So if you missed it, this is going to be really tough. And, um, I'm going to ask you to be as creative as you can to try to find some kind of solution for this last project. Uh, I had several classes and the last of which was precisely using type animating moving words, what we call kinetic type or kinetic text. Um, it's one of the biggest subjects in commercial day-to-day -day animation because every commercial you watch has the text moving and then it stops, you could read it and then it goes on its way, whether it's coming in left, coming in right, top, bottom, fading in from the back, any number of ways uh, the text arrives and leaves. So that's kinetic type. Um, artists often take whole speeches and translate them to kinetic type. One of the most popular ones is the very famous Rules of Fight Club speech uh, that I think Brad Pitt gives in the movie Fight Club. Um, and many people have taken that audio out and replaced it just with um, words that make for, you know, fascinating um, description of the text. So you're hearing it, but you're watching the words. Now, the final project is that, but much smaller. So I just want to say something about all this. I'm going to do a couple of quick demonstrations today at uh, a, a fair speed. And anything you may need to take a note of, you'd be wise to take a note of. This project's due Monday night. This is now Wednesday. Uh, no one's going to finish it in class at a level that's worthy of a final project. Some of you might get a good start, though. And at the very least, you're going to map, up what your, map out what your plan is. Monday, right? Now, Exam week starts this Friday, by the way. So like all the classes from Friday on are considered exam week. And, and I've noticed that BMCC different teachers treat it differently. So I'm treating it as an optional day. So that's gonna be Monday. Look, let me share the screen because I don't wanna skip stuff out. I do it from memory. It's one of the reasons I, I have the handouts. It's for, for all of us, really. Can you all see this? All right. I'm talking about that optional day on Monday. It, it, it isn't officially optional. I'm making it optional. You know, some teachers bring in donuts and they have a little party if they don't have an exam. So if this goes well, you're feeling independent, the work's going well, you could deliver it to me by Monday at midnight. You don't have to come to Monday's class. Monday's class is gonna be the same time and I'm just gonna show up with nothing but support. You know, so if anybody's got, questions about their project or, um, you know, we could screen share, you'll show it to me, that type of thing. That's what Monday's about. 
So is everybody clear that Monday's optional? It should be as need, right? So again, don't be shy. If you, if you need a hand, you come, all right? Now listen, everybody who's got a camera should turn it on. If you don't have a camera, you have to chat me now so I know you're really there. And just give me one second, because you know I just updated. I don't know if all of you got this notice that we all have to upgrade Zoom. Did you guys, any of you guys get that? Upgraded and I haven't noticed a difference till just now or I can't find the chat feature. Oh, there we go. Give me just one second, guys. Still learning how to use this thing. All right. All right. Kayla, Kevin, Jeanette, thank you for letting me know. Camille, excellent. So again, if, if the camera works, you turn it on. If not, like these thoughtful people, let me know that you're really there. All right, I wanna jump in because there's a lot to do. Stay as present as you can. There's only four projects this semester. So the grade you know, rides heavily on those four and it's very popular at a lot of schools. I do the same thing at FIT. So here we go. I want to get right into Animate, just hit the ground running. You know, actually, sorry, I'm a little frazzled last week. Almost forgot. So I, I updated everybody's grades as of, uh, I don't know exactly how many days ago, maybe five, six days ago. So if I got anything the last few days, then you haven't seen the grade yet. So this, this here is, is largely true, but not entirely. I'm definitely gonna be looking at my email um, and the Dropbox for videos, because I have heard from at least one person uh, that I got the video a little late, which was okay with me. So I'll be checking that Dropbox folder from a few classes back, as well as the usual way you send me homework, which is through my email, right? Um, uh, I wanna uh, say to you guys, Akira, if your Adobe Animate trial ended, then um, did you get the free whole free Adobe two months? Uh, we're gonna need to talk about that. So um, the, the Adobe free two months is not over yet. Uh, and if I'm wrong, then uh, and that means everybody else in this group would also uh, have Adobe not working. So Kira, send me a thorough email about what you need to do. You're gonna probably have to contact Adobe or figure out how to get the proper two months. Okay, uh, make sure you reach out to me though. All right, sorry everybody. Try to juggle chats and uh, this. Okay. So here's where we're at. If anyone just could not do enough work to pass this class, you really do have to follow this link and read it closely. I'm not taking any responsibility for what this link says or whether the school updates it as if the policy all uh, changes, but this is a way to give you a head start. I'm just a teacher here. But this is the link for the no credit option, which is the only fair option I've heard of for people whose grades are just too low. Obviously, uh, F grades and probably D grades would be wise to take no credit. I don't have your grades memorized or uh, I don't know you know, it's all mathematical. You should be checking Blackboard and see what your weighted average is like. Your, your grade is likely to be very close to that weighted average. So if yours is, is a failing, you have to read this because you're gonna probably wanna take the no credit option. So again, I can't answer questions about it because I'm not on that side of the fence, but uh, I have been interested and I keep on learning what I can. And this is, you know, if you're paying out of pocket, I don't know if this gets you your money back. I doubt it does but I think it does have an arrangement with financial aid. But one thing it won't do is destroy your GPA. All right, I'm assuming everyone has Animate open. If you don't, please open it now. If you're having troubles with the trial, uh, Kira or anybody else, uh, again, you, you're gonna have to try to get the full two months. I can't tech support at your house, but for now you're gonna have to take notes, thorough notes, right? Because uh, if you can't join me, you're gonna have to take notes. I wanna tell you exactly what's about to happen. I'm gonna quickly run through the classic tween concepts because I'm suggesting the classic tween approach for this project. Keyword there is suggesting. What's gonna happen is you're gonna choose a quote from down here. And here's a short one, peace is its own reward. And a longer one, do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. 
and still longer one by Marvin Gaye. If you're not, if you cannot find peace within yourself, you'll never find it anywhere else. And you can see what I'm doing all the way to Eleanor Roosevelt's, whose is the longest. So I got to say, in terms of the short one, um, you know, one can get a good grade if it's beautiful. And this might be the best way to go, especially if uh, this isn't your favorite subject, you know, meaning the, the animation. Peace is its own reward. Done well, this can get a high grade. For anyone who's looking for a challenge, you might want to go longer or even to the longest one. You know, in a weird way, these could be treated almost as scenes. You know, these words somehow arrive for the first sentence, get a chance to read it, then they leave, then the next sentence forms, then they leave. <clears throat> idea what I'm talking about, you might have missed some of the most important classes. I want to give you a peek at something real fast. So this is not on that list, right? This is a, sh a short one, very short one, very similar to what we did uh, a week ago, uh, roughly. Piece is a full-time job. So kinetic type, that means each word by and large is coming in by itself. It's fills the stage, gives me a time to read it. This is a, a swift, which loops, and it loops kind of nicely. Notice how is a uh, is moving together. I didn't bother to have the word is come from somewhere and a uh, come from somewhere else. Cause who cares about is a? Uh? It's also why I made the word so small. You know, this phrase, this thing here, this quote, is leaning heavily on three words, peace, full time, and job. So if you're going to do a short one, it might be a similar kind of arrangement as this. If you're going to do a long one, it might take more thought. Anybody have any questions so far? You don't be shy about asking me questions. I like questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe it's too early for questions. So what we're about to do is go over the main principles, lightning fast. Then I'm going to help you break down text to, to, to move it into this project. Uh, most of you are going to treat this as a warm-up exercise and then do it over with the proper phrase, uh, but that's going to be up to you. One thing I'm going to say is don't get so involved in a detail that you miss something that I'm presenting to the class, right? Here we go. In Adobe Animate, and again, you know, take notes if that's what's best for you. There's more than one way to learn, and this is up to you, really. But as always, I teach a hands-on approach. So in Adobe Admin 8, uh, I'm going to click Create New or do File Menu New. The whole sequence, we use most of the time the same numbers. 640 by 480, it's called Standard. And the frame rate, you may need to change. I'm asking you to change that to 24. The uh, new default is 30, and it makes everything too fast. And it's, uh, it's more work, to be honest. So 640 by 480, 24, that's not on the handout. You might want to take a note of it. 640 by 480, frame rate of 24. All right, you click Create. Right now, I want to go over a warm-up exercise. Could everybody show, join me? I'd like you to get the rectangle tool, and I'd like you to pick a fill and come to the bottom and click on the stroke, that outline and draw yourself a rectangle. Right beneath it, I'd like you to get the oval tool, because I meant we're gonna draw one beneath it. Change the fill, this is just a warm up. Change the stroke. Now this is directly related to what we're about to do. I just want you to notice one more thing. Under your oval tool, if you press it, no, not there. You could probably have a hexagon tool, this polystar they call it. If you feel like changing the colors, we're gonna draw one more shape. I just wanna make a point and draw your polygon. Now, if you don't like where they are, you could be using the black arrow. This is gonna be the same. Now, here's the thing I wanna point out. If you use shapes with strokes, you have to double click them until we turn these into symbols, which we're about to do. Right now, any of these shapes are going to leave the stroke behind unless I double click them. I want to point out the two tools you're going to use most today are going to be the black arrow for uh, selecting and moving, but this one also, because this can also select, but it can uh, scale and it can rotate. So this is called the free transform tool. We're going to be using the black arrow and the free transform tool. Now, Here's the ticket. 
I'm leaning on classic tweening, and it's the kind of animation I use most, and many animators feel the same. Now, I gotta say, if you're coming in late and missed a lot of classes, I may be more open-minded this semester than any other semester. You may have to come up with a way of animating it that's other than what I'm about to show you. If those words come in in a sequence and is in some way satisfying, you will satisfy the assignment, right? The more interesting it is, the more adult, the higher the grade. But it doesn't mean you have to use the steps I'm showing you. I'm just recommending them. All right, so I'd like you to position these so that they look good. We're looking for something basic. I'm just gonna make a point that some of these decisions are best made early. Remember, at this stage, you have to double click if you have strokes. All right, next urgent step. Before we can do any animation, using classic tweening, we have to convert each of these objects into a symbol. A symbol is an object that lives in the library. First off, since I mentioned it, locate your library. It's probably on your right. There's usually a properties tab that's out all the time that shares a, uh, the location with a library tab and which is currently empty. If the library is missing or the properties is missing, go to the window menu. We could find almost everything. Here's your library. Here's your properties. Now, what I was starting to say was you can't animate these without this urgent step. Could you select the first object? Now make sure you get it stroked too. So that's going to be a double click thing. Now, I need you to either control click if you're on a Mac or right click if you're on Windows on the artwork and use convert to symbol. Give it a name. And notice it showed up in the library. This is the icon it should have. Now I kind of skipped something, so I'm gonna be more thorough on the next one. Select the next shape. Make sure you get the stroke. Control click it. And again, convert to symbol. I didn't mention this though, I probably should. The type you want is graphic symbol. Uh, I didn't mention it because it's the default. So it's probably set to graphic symbol. But I don't know that as a fact. You know, it's, maybe you share your computer. Anyway, we want a graphic symbol. So the second one here, I'm gonna call it um, ball. Oops. And okay, I can't, use classic tweening unless I do this. So I'm going to the next object. Now what you're going to be doing is doing this with type and I'm going to help pretty soon. Go to the last mm -hmm. one. Excuse me? Yes. Um, can, you, um, can you please do that again? Because my, my computer started to freeze up a little bit. Really? So do, yeah. um, so do you have the three shapes? Yeah, I have the three shapes. I just, I just want like the process to like convert them. Like, okay. Look, I didn't do the last one. I'm about to do the last one now. And all three, you have to do them one at a time. Select an object, make sure that you have the strokes. That means you got to double click it or this is going to happen, okay. right? So make sure you double click it. Then control click if you're on a Mac or right click on Windows, right on the artwork, right on it. And this menu will show up. And at the bottom, almost the bottom, you see convert to symbol. Okay, okay. Make sure it's a graphic symbol and give it a name. I'm calling this one poly because it's a polygon. So I got these three graphic symbols in the library, which means I can animate now. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now guys, I wanna show you something else. After you've made your objects into symbols, so it's an important, important step, right? We, could ha we have a simple shortcut that could get everything on their own layers. Now at first, I don't mind working on one layer because I'm looking for design. I'm putting everything where it goes. I'm thinking like a graphic designer. Um, it's just arrangement. You know, but for, for me to be able to animate these words separately, these units or these pictures in this case, separately, they have to be on their own layers. So here's the fastest way to get them to their own layers. Just remember, you draw it, you lay it out, you make your symbols. Now we're going to do uh, uh, move to move to layers and distribute to layers. By the way, the handout goes step by step. I'm not reading my own handout, so what I'm showing you right now is very, very similar. In between what I'm showing you now and the handout, you'll have a fair amount of support. Okay, so I'm assuming everybody made these into symbols. 
I'd like you to draw your attention to the timeline. On the timeline, if you click that black dot, which is a keyframe, it selects all the artwork that happens to be living in it. So on stage, it's, I could click them too, but it's convenient. If I click the back dot, it knows I'm talking about the layer, plus it knows what artwork I'm talking about. Could you please click that? I wanna be clear, you're gonna do this on the final. After your objects are turned to symbols, they're arranged and turned into symbols, you're gonna click that keyframe. And that's what this is called, that black dot. You click the keyframe. Give me one second here, I just wanna make this a little larger so it's easier for people to see. That feature I'm using is in the lower right, it's a little slider. Okay. So you click the keyframe and here's the cool trick. And again, it is on the handout. Come up to the menus way up top, go to the modify menu, go to timeline and do distribute to layers. Now this is an amazing convenience because at first you didn't have to think about layers. You simply laid it out. And now if you look at the timeline, you've got three layers named after the symbols and an empty layer. Can you guys find the empty one, right? The keyframe is not black on that layer. And that one doesn't have a name either. It's probably called layer one. Now, if you found the empty layer, I'm gonna ask you to delete it because it's useless. The reason it's there is the artwork came off that layer and we said distribute to new layers, right? So the old one is sort of obsolete. Let's clean up after ourselves. So you come to the left here and highlight the layer, That's the empty one, yes. Um, when I did that, I got um, more than one, one than more layer. You're supposed to get more than one layer. Do you see mine? Yeah, but I, I'm getting also layer two, layer three, layer four. So I want to ask you something. How many of them have black dots? Um, not, none of them. So you're telling me you're not seeing any artwork on the stage? Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing. So can you click one of the, I want to show you something. Are you looking, look, look, look over here. Okay. If I click this piece of art, it went to that layer. If I click this piece of art, it went to that layer. That's because each object has its own layer. Okay. Is that working for you? Yeah, I, I was just asking, um, does it matter if I delete the other two, three layers? No, you could only delete the empty layer. Okay. You see this layer here? This one looks different than the others. Can you see it on mine? Yes. Right? That one's empty. This is a hollow keyframe. There's no artwork on it. Your questions are good. The ones okay. with the black dots have artwork. Now you, okay. Were you here for any of the animation classes that we did? Uh, yeah, I was. I, I missed one. Okay, because this was in every single class okay. since the first one. But anyway, the one with the hollow the hollow keyframe can be deleted. So you highlight it, there's a little private trash can just above it, click that, and now you've got three layers. If there's three objects, you got three layers. Okay. All right, I wanna go over some of the basics. Now, you could move these objects. So what I'd like you to do is take them and move them to the left wall, or near the left wall. And I'm gonna do this real quickly. For this quick exercise, the only goal we have is to have these objects move from the left wall to the right wall in 30 frames. Now, if I click the top object, it shows me what layer that is. It's called box. Now, if yours are unnamed, it's because when you made your symbols, you didn't name them. Right? We drew the artwork, we named them, and then we tasked them to go to their own layers. So each layer is named after the objects right now in the library. Frankly, it doesn't really matter if your layers are named, but it's gonna help you, um, hang on a second. I'm, I just made a mess, watch this happen. Give me a second there. Workspaces, essentials, I'm gonna ask it to reset. Am I sure? Yeah. All right. Sorry. Um, the named layers are just convenient. This one says poly for polygon. If I look in the library, it was named after this one. But if I never bothered to name the objects in the library, then, you know, animate's not that smart and it just doesn't give them names, you know. All right. In any case, right now, what I'd like you to do 
is um, take a look at your layers and quickly reorder them in a way that makes sense. And this is what I mean by that. The box is on top. And I'm a little confused because when I look at the layers, it seems to be on bottom. Now, honestly, that doesn't mean a thing, but it's just confusing. So I'm going to take the box layer, press on it, and drag it up. So it correlates easily. Okay, the one that's on top is also the top layer, right? This one called poly is at the bottom, really. So I'm going to go to the poly layer and drag it to the bottom. I want to say something to you guys uh, to be, you know, as clear as I can. That won't change your results. That just makes it make more sense while you're working. You know, they, they parallel each other. All right. I'd like you to go to that top keyframe and click it. And you should see which object's being selected. We're going to animate that one independently on that layer. You click the next keyframe. Those are the black dots underneath it. And you should see the next object. And you click the bottommost keyframe and you see that object. Now here's the first step beyond this, right? We want to turn on tweening for each layer. Uh, but first, let's decide how long we want the animation to be. So I'd like you to simply go out to 40 frames. And you see a number above it. This is worth taking a note. F5 is the best way to extend a layer in time, to give it time. Now I'm on a Mac laptop, so unfortunately I have to hold the FN key and tap F5. So what I'm doing is I'm going layer by layer and saying, you know what, you got yourself a second and a half to live. <laughs> so I'm going to the next layer and I'm clicking right underneath there. You see where I'm going? Also frame 40. And to tell that ball that it gets to, you see the ball is gone right now, right? Because it only has one second to live, you know, one frame to live. But I'm going to click here, I'm going to F5 it, and I've extended it. I'm going to go to the next one, which I should be seeing the polygon, but it, it was left behind. It lives in frame one, right? But as soon as the playhead's going to pass it, playing the movie, that one disappears. So I better go to frame 40 on that layer and F5 it. So what you do is you got three pieces of art, you got three symbols, each one's got a layer, and in this case, they all have 40 frames to live. In English though, 24 frames is a second, so we gave it a little less than two seconds. All right, to make it move, first we have to go to each keyframe and tell it to classic tween. I'd like you to join me very precisely. Go to the top keyframe, control click on it and say create classic tween. You should see it change color and a bunch of little dots show up. I got an hour so I'm going to be able to repeat some of this right and I, I want to repeat that it's pretty detailed handout this time you know it's almost like a manual. But let's go to the next keyframe in my case that's for the ball layer and I'm going to control click on the keyframe. There's a timeline operation down there. I'm going to say create classic tween. Don't mix your tweens right now. You're just going to get confused. If any of you have been playing with other kinds of tweens, I will accept them, right? But I'm only reviewing this one. So I want to go to the last one. Now what I'm doing is telling them all that there can be classic tween now. I'm ready to start making things move. I drew them. I designed them. I made them into symbols. I gave them their own layers. I extended the whole movie to a second and a half, roughly. And just now, I went to each layer and told them to tween. Now, to make a move, you bring the playhead over and decide when you want it to arrive somewhere. Now, I want it to arrive in frame 40 against the other wall. So let's just go over to frame 40. To make the box move, there's more than one way. The way I'm going to show you right now is very methodical. Click in that frame of the correct layer. Right? So if you have any doubt what layer you're on, please check. You know, click the artwork, for example. Sorry, or click the keyframe, I should say. You know, you should see some kind of difference letting you know that you selected that object. Just know where you are. 
All right, so we're going to frame 40. F6 is the trick we're after. It's the biggest shortcut for this kind of thing, F6. So I'm gonna hold down my FN key and tap F6. So again, while that is on the handout, it is wise to take notes. This is the first handout I ever wrote that actually asked you to prepare to take notes. So when you have six, you copied that artwork is what you actually did. There's a new keyframe there. It means that in that keyframe, you could move it. I'd like you to grab the artwork and drag it to the right. If you rewound by taking the playhead to the beginning, only that object moves now. I'm gonna Command Z this a couple times so I could show you one more time. A few steps ago, all I had was three objects and a purpley timeline. I went into the top layer here and clicked and asked for a new keyframe. That was with F6. Again, I need the FN key. Once you see that black dot there, right, it means you got the early copy in frame one telling it to stay on the left. This copy is free to do whatever you want. So I'm gonna drag it over to the right. Professor. Yes. When I hit F6, mm -hmm. it gave me uh, individual keyframes. It didn't draw a line between. Oh, really? So let yeah. me, uh, let's try to fix that. Can you command Z to all those keyframes go away? Sure. Yeah, I got it. So, you know, I'm not sure what the cause is, but you could take a look on mine for a minute. Mm -hmm. So like if I accidentally highlight a layer, it looks like a different color. Mm -hmm. If I F6 now, look what happened. A million yeah. keyframes. So I better command Z that. So what usually happens is somehow you accidentally click in the wrong place and highlighted the whole layer. Okay. Right? So keep your eye out for it. You know how to fix it now, you command Z. I'm gonna do the next object so you could see again, you know, what the step is. If I click here carefully, I could see that only that one frame is highlighted. I could F6 okay. safely now. So I click on that keyframe. Here's my F6. Yeah, that worked. Right now, I'm going to drag it over. You're not the only one that's going to happen to, so I'm glad you mentioned it. Right? If you ever see a layer highlight, you're in trouble. You know, just click somewhere on stage to start over again. So I want you to go to the next layer, and again, you're creating an end frame. This is essence of animation going on here. The, the, the least you can have is two frames to make something move. You know, one that represents a location, and the other one that represents it in the next location. You say to your friend, oh, I'm gonna be at your house in an hour, right? So your first keyframes wherever you live and your second keyframes at their house, down the timeline, you know, an hour later. So let's go down the timeline again, frame 40 for that last layer, click in that slot, F6 or FN, F6 if necessary. You see you got two keyframes, you could drag this one over. Okay, I wanna use my time wisely Right, and uh, I would like to show you all, uh, let me hang on one second here, I just wanna get a look at everybody here. I would like to show you a couple quick details, and then I'm gonna kind of run through that one more time. I'm tempted to go right to the text though, and do it all with text. You know, I think that's for the best. I'm gonna jump right to the text then. So what we're gonna do is repeat those steps a little bit more intelligently, and with a real goal, not just a couple of shapes, right? What that was about just there, I'm gonna second here, my zoom is sizing rather, rather oddly. There we go. Um, the notion of symbols, uh, the graphic symbols you put in the library I'm talking about, keyframes, classic tweening and layers. Let's jump into a um, brief warm up for actually the kinetic type project. Um, give me one second. I just want to check one quick thing. Yeah, let's do a warm up with pieces of full time job, right? Because it's short, right? And then everyone could choose their own phrases and, and figure out how far you want to take it as an individual. All right, could everybody open a new document? That's file menu new or command N. 640 by 480, frame rate of 24. Let's click create. All right, so the first step is to get the text down, right? And uh, what did I just say that text was pieces, a full-time job, right? Pieces of full-time job. I wanna tell you something, right? And um, again, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna go too far with this. 
I do want to show you something quickly, though. Um, one second here. You want to choose what words go together and what don't. You know what? I'm just going to do this verbally. Peace is a full-time job. Each word you choose to animate is going to be another layer and a little more work, right? So you want to choose wisely. The more words, the more work. So I could do peace is a full-time, because that's one word, full-time, job, five-layer thing. But the truth of it is, as I said to you earlier, is a. It's not important enough to have each word doing some trick along its way, right? So, you know, again, keep this in mind. You're not, you don't have to do the same look. You definitely don't. Hang on a second here. This is a simple one. You know, some kind of animation you see all the time. You know, it looks like a cereal commercial or something, you know? Um, and I chose to move is a uh, because it wasn't important. So you're gonna have to make that decision for yourself when you choose your phrase. Right now I'm gonna arrange mine like this one. Okay, so. I'd like you to get the type tool. We're working on one layer for a little while. So you get the type tool. Don't make a box, just click, right? Write the word peace. Now we're gonna change fonts, but the first decision is, do you want uppercase letters? Do you want lowercase letters? Take some imagination, you know? I mean, I'm not saying this is wrong. Oops, sorry. Does this, I think my font doesn't even have lowercase letters. But you know what I mean, little letters are big letters. All right, now to change the font, your written piece, you wanna change the font, the color, and the size, All right? Let's start with size. Could everybody um, get the free transform tool? So again, that's this tool on the toolbar. We've been using it, uh, we've used it before, right? This is in Photoshop and Illustrator and it makes things big or small and does some other cool tricks. But to use it, I highly recommend you hold down shift because if your text distorts, it's gonna make your project look really bad. So I'd hold down shift and make the text nice and large. That's the free transform tool. And I'm recommending the shift key to make sure it doesn't distort it. Is everybody all right? If you're not all right, like a couple of guys have been doing, just turn on the mic, you know, okay. About changing the font, I'm gonna ask you to switch to the black arrow because it's very friendly to text. And if the text doesn't have a box around it, just click it once. Take a look at your properties palette. The properties palette is the boss of just about everything in design. You know, it knows you're working with text. So you could click under character and see what fonts you have. Now, I, I got luckiest guy from the internet, so you probably don't have it. So what you could do is you could click on the little arrow see little samples of the fonts you have, right? And if, um, sorry, you know, that way, try different fonts. But a faster way you might like is this. Highlight whatever font you're seeing on the properties palette and use your down arrow key to zip through other fonts. And now right now, we don't have time for you to choose your favorite font, but choose something you kind of like. And I want to give you some advice you know, um, this Noto font, for some reason, there's a hundred of them. They click the down arrow forever, and it just, I'm just going to go past it. You know, I'm going to start elsewhere. I don't know what that font is. I'm going to delete it when I have a chance. So I'm going to start higher. So I'm, I'm zipping through. This is cool. Amro Sans. I think I'm going to use it. So when you find one you like, you could continue to use it. I like clicking the text, highlighting the font, and using my down arrow keys to zip through. Um, I hate this font, don't use Apple Chancery, overused, abused. If you find something with some personality, even, even that, you know. Thicker fonts are probably gonna be a little easier to animate. So I'm gonna stick with, um, you know, a bold looking font. Okay, what I want you to do then is get the type tool again and click elsewhere, right? You wanna click elsewhere till you see a new cursor. I'm gonna type is space a. Uh. And it's using the font I just chose. If I want to change it, I get the black arrow, click it once, and I could choose a different font. You know, right now I like the same font, so I'm not going to change the font. What I'm going to do though is go to the transform tool, hold down shift, and find the size that I want. Now it would be silly to get bigger than piece. That's obvious, right? I could go with a similar size. I'm just not feeling it. 
I'm going to make it smaller. I want to warn you, when things overlap like that, they're hard to, to select later, right? Just keep an eye on it. I'm not saying you can't do it. Just keep an eye on it. It's going to be you, later on. You want to be sure that you could click these easily. So I'm going to keep them far enough apart to try to help with that. All right. I'm going to get the type tool. And I'm going to write uh, full time. And I'm going with capital letters. And did this not use that? No, it did use the font. It did. It just doesn't look as good. I'm going to scale it up. So I'm going back to the scale tool. So every time you're ready to make a new text block, that looks bad. See, there's a free font and uh, things like this happen with free fonts. This person uh, was not as sensitive as um, cool font, but I don't know, maybe I could use this. All right, your teacher should, uh, I'm just gonna live with it. Okay, pieces of full time. And again, get the type tool whenever you're ready. Click, write your last word, which is job. I'm gonna make that word big, it's just three letters and it's really important to this phrase. So I'm gonna get my transform tool, I'm holding down shift and I'm getting big. And I might even match the width of um, full time there. Okay, all right, once you've got it down with your black arrow, you could start moving things around or the transform tool because what you want right now is the final arrangement. Now, while you're moving them around, I want you to listen. This is a technique that I learned from a place called Orange Design, in which I thought was brilliant and I've been doing it ever since. You design the end of the animation first, when it comes to text anyway, and other design features. And the reason being is it's gonna stop like this so the person could read. At first, the word peace is coming out of nowhere is a full-time person doesn't know what the phrase is, you know, but uh, this is what they're going to see when they're done, right? So if you want to make any changes, this is your big chance. You could click any of them, change the font. It's going to be very difficult soon. Hey, you know what? Let's give this a background color. I don't think you could choose your colors well without a background. Could you click on the empty stage, get your black arrow or your transform tool, either one, and click on the empty stage? I want you to look at your properties palette. You should be seeing this area here called stage. So if you click on the empty stage, this area shows up. It's pale, so it's, it's, it's I don't know why it's pale, but it's pale. If you click the white box, you could pick a different color for your background. So if I wanna stick with those blues, then it's affecting my decision right now. Um, I may or may not. Or once you've got a background, did that work for everybody? Was it easy to find the background color? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what I'd like you to do at this stage then is if you want to change the color of any of the text, which I didn't mention, just click the text back to the properties palette. You'll see your color right there. Properties palette knows what you clicked on. So it makes life easy. Basically you click on the thing that interests you. The features are here. So I'm going to check out some other colors while I'm here. Just real, make some quick decisions. This is a negative phrase. Why did I choose this? It's making peace sound bad. I, I, I should have chose something else. Anyway. Give yourself a minute to arrange this. Now, while you're arranging it, I wanna say something to you. The arrangement is really important at this stage because once we make the words move, it's gonna be harder to change their conclusion. You know, this is our goal to what you just created here, right? So we're gonna copy this down the timeline, you know, choose, I'm gonna say 100 frames. So it's way down there, right? And then we're gonna take advantage of those 100 frames to make these words arrive. And I keep on using that word. There's many ways to make something arrive. This is their destination. Okay, whatever you have now in terms of design is okay. Hey, Kevin, how you doing over there? I can't tell because you got a photo instead of a video. I'm doing all right. You doing okay? All right. Yeah, I'm doing fine, thank you. You're welcome. 
Guys, um, how's everybody else? I only see half of you. Are we okay so far? Yeah. All right. So we're on layers. We got an arrangement. We didn't, uh, did we already make our symbols? No, we got to make our symbols next. I want to say, I like making the symbols before I make the layer because the layers will get named, which helps a lot. So let's make our symbols first. So go to the first word and click it. And then we're back to the stage now, you know, on the stage, click the first word once and then control click it or right click it. We're back to this from the earlier demonstration. Yeah, so they're not shapes this time, they're words. You know, we did a square, a circle and a polygon. Now it's a word, convert to symbol. We're choosing graphic and I'm gonna highly, highly recommend you name it. I'm gonna name it exactly after the word because that's gonna make everything make sense. Your library will make sense, my layers, click okay. The next one I put is a uh, as a block. So I use the word block a lot, right? Because it's really two words, but I'm gonna make this block into a symbol. They're gonna move together. So I click that block and then I control click and I say convert to symbol. So I'm control clicking right on the artwork or on the words, on the text block. And I say convert to symbol. And I'm gonna call it is a. Uh. So you work your way through every item. And this is a day-to-day -day life. By the way, if I'd made layers in Illustrator and brought them in, there are methods where the layers would come in from Illustrator and they'd all be named. Anyway, right now we're talking about symbols, so I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. The next word was full-time. So I'm gonna write full-time and go to the last one and convert to symbol. Once you've done each of those, like I said, I, I hope you didn't have a hard time selecting any because some of them overlap each other. You really gotta be careful about it. Go to the library and take a peek. You should be seeing those same four items. You could click them once. Don't double click these, all right? But you can click them once each and see they all made it. The primary goal with doing that is classic tweening, which is just a fabulous feature, depends on um, these symbols and graphic symbols, um, movie clip symbols is another one, and button symbols for people who program in, in Adobe Animate. They could actually make buttons. Those three can be classic tweened. The ones that animators use by far the most is graphic symbol, and that's why we're choosing it. Some of you guys are going to probably show up in my intro to 2D animation class where we're going to repeat this at one point. All right. All right, if they're all symbols, you're seeing them all in the library, we're ready to get these to their own layers. In the past, it was a slow process, step by step, but uh, Adobe Animate's made it easy. I'd like you to go to the timeline and click that keyframe. By doing that, you've selected all the artwork. That was really my only goal. I could have done this, pressed and dragged from nearby over the whole thing, no matter how, if you get all the artwork selected, you're good. You have to do that. All right, guys, this is an advanced trick that I happen to adore. We did it earlier this morning. Let's go to modify, timeline, distribute to layers. Now it has a shortcut. This over here means command shift D, but I don't think I'm gonna do this often enough to bother with it. But you do have to remember where it is. It's an odd place, modify, timeline, distribute to layers. And uh, again, that is on the handout. So now when you look at your layers, I can probably make a little more sense every time you do it. You could see there's a layer each for the text and the original layer called layer one, which currently has a hollow keyframe. If you're seeing one layer only without a black keyframe, it's empty. Click on it and click the little trash can. I want to do one more organizing thing before we turn on our tweens, uh, which is, I don't like the layer order. Again, it really doesn't matter. And it could just be a compulsive teacher. But just the way my mind works, if the word piece is the top way on top, and then is a full-time job, it's gonna help me from getting confused. If you feel the same, Go to the layers, 
find the piece layer, press and drag it to the top, find the is a layer, press and drag it just beneath, and keep doing that until it's in the exact same order. You could read it if you wanted. The two next steps are preparing to actually make the words move. My favorite next step is determining how long I think I want the animation to be. Now, we're gonna go out to 100 frames this time, right? So it's gonna take just a slight more effort. I'd like you to get to your timeline and notice you could scroll over to the right. There's a little scroll bar here. If, you have, if you're on a notepad, uh, a laptop, I mean to say, you could just you know, use your touchpad to scroll to the right. I want you to find Fane 100. We want to F5. So look, we're comparing two shortcuts, and I admit it, there's not a lot of shortcuts today, but we're going to use F5 and F6, right? So right now, I just want to use F5. All right, F5, go to the next layer in frame 100. You're kind of making a column in F5, the next one. You're gonna do each of these, and this way you'll notice the words keep showing up because that last word only has one frame to live, way down river on my left. But if I go F5 it, it's also gonna have 100 frames, just over four seconds. So F5 them all. So. If, you're, if you also have four layers, you should also see these four gray bars. Get your way back to frame one. So there's that little scroll bar down here. We could use your touchpad. That's an important step. By the way, anyone who's gonna be doing more animation, animators, uh, multimedia people, possibly video people, later on, you can make your movie longer and shorter. It's not like you're obliged to this length forever but it gives you a good start. Right now, what we're gonna do is make the decision to tell each layer it's gonna be classic tween. Uh, again, when you uh, people who love this uh, will mix animation methods, frame by frame, which we did a little of, shape tween, which we did a little of, classic tween, which we did more of, and we're doing more of now. Uh, there's also motion tweening, tweening in code. Let's stick with classic tweening. So you go to the first frame of one layer. So I'm starting at the top and I click the keyframe and I control click it to get this menu. Or I right click. So I'm going to the first black dot on the piece layer and I'm gonna say create classic tween. I'm, I'm doing a very mechanical kind of processes today. Everything I do almost, I'm doing it four times. So I'm going to the keyframe underneath it. Remember, you're in frame one. Get back to frame one and go to each keyframe and say, create classic tween. Be really careful that it's classic. The next one, classic. I'm open-minded. What if it doesn't give you the option for classic? Uh, so Kaylin, are you on frame one? Um, yeah. And you've control clicked the keyframe? Are you on the timeline? Yes. Uh, and, and when you control click it, what options does it give you? Hey, like, Create motion tween. Is, is there a, a TV show on or something over there? Is Interruption. It, oh, really? Wow. Okay. Tell me what the options are that it's showing you again. Create motion tween. Not, no create classic tween? No. Uh, I'm control clicking on uh, the first word, right? No, on the first keyframe. So you have to go to the oh. timeline, the black dots. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's right there. So um, that's okay. Guys, I want to say something to everybody. What she was just describing is a common question. How do I know when I'm supposed to click on stage as opposed to how do I know when I'm supposed to click in the timeline? And um. Do I click at the end of the timeline or no. the frame one? So I have the feeling you came late today, <laughs> and I'm not. Yes, I, I, the I did. Semester. My classes are the worst to come late. So any of you going to take me for animation? The class is twice as hard as this one. I got to warn you, but it's it's very rewarding. You're going to have to come on time. All right. 
All right, on frame one. So I'm going to the last one. Frame one of my job layer, and I'm control clicking, and I say create classic tween. So, Kaylin, if that's working, I'm going to ask you to turn off your mic because uh, just because it's so noisy. Right, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. So, guys, before I go to the next step, I just want to say something about what we're actually doing. Remember, it's called tween. So, what it's going to do is we're focused on what's between the two keyframes that you made. So, your first keyframe is going to establish where the object's going to begin. The second keyframe is where it arrives. So, this is where it's going to get hairy and kind of interesting. You see, your final frames, you cannot touch because they're all in the right locations. They look like this. But I want to show you something just to be clear. Once your tween's turned on and you can see it by these colors, we're going to go to the end of each layer and F6 to make sure there's a copy of each piece of artwork in this location. This is the end of the movie. And we're about to finish the end of the movie, believe it or not, then go back and change how it begins. So this is the trick that I learned from Orange Design. You know the conclusion of all the words, uh, zero to 60 miles per hour in one minute. You know, at every other car ad. 10, safety, features, and then everyone reads it, right? So we're working on the end. I'd like for you to make sure now, if your tweens are turned on, that you're going to the end of the top layer, right? So it's purple on my screen. But I'm going into the last keyframe, that's frame 100, and this time it's F6. All right, folks, I have to say something. F5 just means add time. F6 means copy the artwork here. So let's go to each one. Remember, it's the last frame now, and we're F6ing. This was the magic trick. I couldn't believe the, the brilliance of these people. Um, because they were making posters and all this other stuff with the same layout. They just kept on recycling it somehow, even into the animations. Your frame 100 is finished. <laughs> if you touch it, you're going to break that animation. Guys, I, I hope you're feeling open-minded enough to change that. I have something smarter for you. Sorry. Could you command Z? Sorry. Until those keyframes go away. I don't want them to all end at the same moment. That's gonna be boring. I got something better for you that's not much harder. All right, so I hope you command Z now. There's probably, there should only be keyframes in frame one. Get yourself back to frame one. Okay. We're gonna start making a, a time decision. Even before I make the word slide, I'm gonna make them know they're gonna take turns. So watch this and then join me. The word piece is in frame one, but Isa isn't gonna show up until 15. So this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm on the Isa layer, I click the black keyframe, then I press and drag it carefully to the right, and I drop it off at 15. So the top layer is piece. It starts in frame one. Isa starts a little late. I'm gonna to go to full time. Yes, is there a question out there? I'm going to do it twice more. So I'm going to go to the next one, click the keyframe for full time, and say, no, don't start in frame one. Press on it. I'm going to drag it out to 30. So I'm going by 15s. You can see the pattern. You're going to actually see something that looks a bit like an animation in a moment. I'm going to click this one. This is the word job. It's currently showing up in frame one. I don't want it to, though. So I'm going another 15 out. It looks like it's frame 45. This is scattered timing, I call it. So one object's there at the beginning of the movie. And let me show this to you. Hang on a second. Piece, 15 frames later. It's all right, it's not interesting yet, but it's a good start. I've seen whole animations done just like that, just with the word showing up. In typing animations, every single letter would get a turn but we're doing it with text blocks. Before I go any further, I wanna ask you how that went. I went pretty good. Pretty good? Are you all yeah, seeing some kind, of, some kind of timing? Yeah. All right. I like this approach 
because now we can think about each word separately. We kind of get it. The audience says peace. Oh, cool. Is a, is a what? <laughs> you know, full time, you know, in each word and then, oh, peace is a full time job. Yeah, I guess it is. You know, that type of reaction. Let's make them slide though. Right now we got the timing down, but I want to make them slide. All right. So one of the changes I just made was because I did, I wanted the word peace say also to slide, but I want the word peace to slide in and arrive on frame 15. This is going to make more sense in a couple of minutes, but I want you to focus just on the peace layer with me. Right? So make sure you found the peace layer. I believe your artwork starts in frame one. I want you to go to frame 15 of the exact same layer and F6. You may need your FN key. Now this is a tween going on here. Suddenly there's a solid arrow saying, I am prepared to go from this location of artwork to this one. Now, if you see the two keyframes, here's the magic. The second one stays put. The first one you could move wherever you want. Now watch this. So if you bring this back to frame one, take the word piece, decide where you want it to start. You know, for example, my examples, it came from here and it slid over. If you don't like that, you go to frame one. I'm going to command Z it just so we can get back to where I was. Right, this is where I was. Make sure it's frame one though. You got to go to frame one. And then you could drag it anywhere you want. It'll come from there because your frame 15 is locked. My right, computer's hanging up. And I even restarted it before class. I made a mess of it this semester. I got to do some serious maintenance. Did the word peace do some kind of slide or drop? Let's try yeah, it again. The next layer, right, is us uh, starts currently on 15, but I want it to come from somewhere else. Don't move it now, right? That's the one that's telling you where it's supposed to be. Go to frame 30, you know, 15 frames later and copy it there with your F6 trick. It's a beautiful thing. So currently these two keyframes are identical, which sounds kind of dumb, but we did it just to create a, a workflow. This one here on 30 is when it arrives. You always go back to the beginning, right? On this layer, that's this frame, this is where it starts. And now you choose where it comes from. I'm gonna make this come from the right. So not only are they taking turns, but they're coming from different locations. Sorry about my, my computer glitch, and here it is as a Swift. It'll, it'll loop in a, in a few seconds. All right, let's go to the next phrase then. Remember, piece is a full-time job is not acceptable for the final, right? This is a warm-up. So so how do I play? What's that? How do I press play? Uh, you hit return. So if it doesn't work, uh, just click on stage and then hit return again. Is that behaving? All right, if you yes. want to see it outside of flash, hold down command, keep it down and tap return. And you could see it in this separate window. This is a Swift. By the way, this is one of the output files I'll accept for the homework. Um, I'll talk about the output files later, but command return makes a Swift. It saves it to wherever your file is saved, which we've been very neglectful and have not yet saved. I, I think we better take a little stop for a minute. I want to finish these two motions though, and then save properly. Okay. I'm getting back early to see what I did. Peace took 15 frames to slide in. Then is a uh, took 15 frames to slide in. I'm going to work on full time now. So I see where it's opening frame is. I totally don't want to move that artwork that lives here. That's going to stay there right now. I go 15 frames later and I F6 it to make the copy. That's the one that's gonna stay put. I'm saying arrive there. This is the beginning of your train, of your journey. This is the end of the journey. So once you've established the end, you can go back to the beginning and say, where should this come from? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe uh, there. So again, my computer's misbehaving, so the previews are bugging me. That was a better one. Right? You can see the last word feels awkward because it's not coming from anywhere. 
So each word you cascaded by moving them uh, 15 frames down the timeline. And now we're using that for another level of um, activity. Yeah, we're saying, yeah, start here, but not in that spot. So we're making these pairs, these bookends. So here I am on the job layer. I found its frame, it's 45. I'm gonna go 15 frames later, roughly. Doesn't have to be exact. And I'm gonna carefully F6 in there. Each time I play this trick, and it's a common animator's trick, I'm gonna to go to the last one and say, well, you don't have to be there, that's boring. So I'm gonna find a place for it. Now what you should see, if you're following these same kind of steps, is a motion, right? And then these little dots means it's not really going anywhere. Then the next object has some kind of motion, it's an arrow. Then these little dots after it arrived. And they're each kind of making it into their slot and then hanging out, is the idea. If I hit return, I could actually bring the playhead back to the beginning and hit return. This is a, a, a possibly completed animation. Now, I want to say a few other things about this, and we have just enough time for it, but let's save these anyway so you could look at them. You know? So I'm going to do File Menu Save, plain old save. If you've got a folder for this kind of stuff, save it there. Right? Um, I'm just going to call this um, Type Demo. And uh, don't follow my example. I'm going to be sloppy today because I'm not going to keep this. I'm putting it on the desktop, which I'm going to clean up later. Type demo.fla. It's better to put it in a folder because you're going to make numerous Swifts and you're probably going to make a GIF for me, which I'm going to be talking about. Uh, some of you uh, with futures in this are going to make videos um, all from the same file. So it's good to have a folder to keep them. I'm being a little messy. All right, click save. So I just want to say, if you do command return now, so you hold down command, hit return, or hold down control and hit enter, Windows people, I imagine. Um, yeah, control, enter on Windows. You're going to see it keep looping. You know, I want to say a little bit about what's going on here. So Swifts is what you just made. When you did command return or control enter, you made a dot Swift. It's named after the FLA, your original, but this is a dot Swift. It's in your folder or on your desktop or wherever you save the original. When you do the final one, you could send me the Swift if you like. I am going to show you another option, though. I think I prefer GIFs, animated GIFs, which we've been making all semester. Um, actually, I'm not sure that I have with you. I'm, uh, I mixed you guys up with a different group, perhaps. So we'll take another look at it. But that's the gist of it. I want to get back to the animation for a minute, though, before we go further. I want to point something out. The first layer finished moving at frame 15, but it hung out all the way to frame 100. The second layer arrived later in 30, also though hangs out to 100. Each layer arrives scattered timing, 45, and then the last one arrived 60, but even this one had 40 more frames. What I like about that is this is a pause. All these extra frames is a pause. Every time it loops, at least I got 40 frames to read it. So I'm going to recommend that, uh, you know, you make your timelines a little long. If you're choosing a short phrase like this one, 100 frames. If it's twice as long, maybe 200 frames. I want to say something else to everybody very practical about the final. You could give me an animation done in this program um, in any way that you could come up with using the words that I've assigned. So it doesn't have to use everything I'm showing you. It could have even been without the tweening for a partial credit grade. You know, just the timing. Remember, we moved things over so the words just showed up. One could argue that's an animation, just not as interesting as this one. I want to go one more step with classic tweening, and then I just want to talk about output and uh, when it's due and all of that, right? You know, the other things that you could do with classic tweening that I love is you could find a keyframe and then click the artwork to tell it to be a different color or a different alpha, meaning transparency. I'd like you to go to frame one, then click the artwork once, and go to your properties palette. So if you go to a keyframe and click the artwork, so people taking notes, you have to do both. You have to find a keyframe and click the artwork once. 
for color effects to show up. Your choices are either tint or alpha. I'm going to do alpha. You could lower this down to zero if you want, and that word will fade in because the next keyframe doesn't have alpha. I'm going to bring this a little closer. Pizza, professor? Yes, I'm going to do it on the next word. So if you go to your next word is a, I'm going to bring this a little closer to the stage because it's going to be transparent anyway. I go, I, you choose a keyframe, click the artwork, then you look at the properties palette to find this area called color effect. It may be folded up. Did you find color effect? Color effect. If you don't find it, I want to repeat because it's, it's tricky. You do have to be over a keyframe. You can't be in the middle. So to be sure, you might just want to click the keyframe. So it's got to be on one of those black dots. That's what the keyframes are. Then you have to click the artwork on the stage also for this stuff to show up. That's why some of you guys are not going to do it. That's okay. But on the color effect, alpha is the one that I'm setting to zero. So I'm going to go to the first frame of each and make it transparent. So here's full times, first frame. I go to the keyframe, click the artwork once. That makes it the option available. It knows exactly which piece I'm talking about. And I set alpha to zero. So I'm doing that on each sequence, the ones that are, are not in the correct location, you know, like this guy's coming from off stage. I, I click the keyframe, click the artwork, then this shows up. Tint is fun also, but I'm just gonna do alpha today because I, I need uh, the time remaining. And I set my alpha to zero. I'm gonna save this again, and I wanna show you how much cooler that looks. So, you know, one thing that I, I find interesting about fade-ins like that is oftentimes the original word doesn't have to be that far. You know, so I could actually um, go to the, the transparent words right now, and I'm bringing them closer to their final location. So it's gonna be more about the fade-ins. So you can't really tell that they're not really coming from off stage anymore, just because they started invisible, faded in on their little journey. All right, I'd like you to save what you have. Um, and I just wanna say a little bit about output. Again, remember, if you're feeling this, you take it as far as you can. If you're not feeling it, be smart, succinct, try to make it beautiful maybe with font choices and color, you know, do your best. There's gonna be a range of grades on something that's essentially creative and you don't have to use every tech step I show you. But save that FLA, save it often. What I want from you is an animated GIF. I'll accept SWIFTs if anyone's having a trouble with the GIFs, like, I don't know if some of you are going to get crazy, for example, and figure out how to bring in sound. <laughs> but if you do that, the GIF doesn't have sound. The Swift does. So I'm keeping my mind open for anyone who's going to jam on this. Let's get to the GIFs. Can everybody join me into the file menu? File menu has a cool export feature. And it lets me export um, video, which we're not going to cover this semester, but it's could be the most common export format at this stage, especially people making movies. We're going to do export an animated GIF, which is perfect for the internet and uh, email delivery. Let's choose that. This is a very easy feature to use. Um, and it's not listed on my handout. Um, so I may repeat this. There's only a couple things you care about. Make sure that transparency is not checked because if it is, you're going to lose your background color when you export it. So make sure transparency is off. I'd like you to come down toward the bottom and find looping, which is hiding on my computer. And it's really up to you. I would suggest set it to loop forever. I have to be honest, in some situations that won't work and it's going to play once anyway. I'm not figured out what the glitch is. But in ideal situations, it will just keep looping. So that's so like, it. Yes. It doesn't even show it, but uh, I guess it always says with looping forever. I don't know why. 
Yeah, you know, I think when you set it on your own computer, it just stays that way until the next time you change it. So yeah, but ever, what in, does it never show? In, it never showed, like, all this time. <laughs> really? You're not seeing it even now? Yeah, it's pretty weird. Like, the No, you know what? I'm not really surprised. I got to say something quickly about that. Um, Adobe products are really funky about certain screen settings on individual computers. Like, mm -hmm. so I don't know what the rules are about it, but like screen resolution comes in different numbers and most of us don't even check what they are. But some settings for your monitor uh, cut off things on the larger windows in Adobe Animate. And it drives mm -hmm. me crazy. It's why some of us almost cut off on mine and I have a rather large laptop. So, um, you know, it's a bit of a glitch. So if you're not seeing stuff, yeah. I have the feeling that it's about that. It's about the screen resolution. I don't really think that is because like no. mine, it's, it's, uh, it, it feels like it's a glitch because it has a huge gray oh. space, like blank. Bad. And the bottom, the, the bottoms are super like everywhere. I, I, I believe that. It, this, I totally believe that. You know, I have to say what you should probably do is update it at the next possible opportunity. Like if you've got a, a legal copy of it, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And you, that means you probably have Creative Cloud, right? Yeah. You would open the Creative Cloud application, right? Uh, which you might have to search, Creative Cloud. Um, mm -hmm. It'll tell you what can be updated. You'd go to the Adobe Animate option and tell it to update. And that might just save you. You know, if it's a glitch, at least it'll it'll upload a, the newest version. But I think this is the newest version. No, that's okay. But maybe maybe you know what they 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 um have little patches every all the time. Mm -hmm. So even if there's the smallest patch and it's the same name version, you may be able to update it anyway. No, oh, okay. You know, so Thank I would that's what I would do personally and see if it worked. So anyway, let me get back to this. So at that stage, you just simply click save. You really didn't do nothing but check the transparency box and if possible, check looping. You know, get a look at looping and then check save. So if you save to a folder, you're in better shape than me. Uh, mine, I'm about to save the GIF to my desktop. I'm gonna do that. And uh, I'm gonna hide animate for a minute. So I'm up at the animate menu, way up top, top left. I'm doing hide animate. Um, and I'm just going to, uh, you know, make my way to the desktop. Here it is. So if I wanted to preview this, right, there's numerous ways. On a Mac, you could click a GIF once and just hit your space bar. I don't know if that works on Windows or not. And it is looping, which is nice. If that doesn't work on, on, uh, on Windows or any computer you feel like trying this, just get yourself a tab open and drag the GIF and drop it inside of Chrome or any browser. Just drop it in here. It also gives you an idea how that size feels compared to websites and other things. All right. Uh, folks, I apologize that there's not more detail about exporting the animated GIF on the handout. So it's just, just file menu, export, animated GIF. Um, I want to get a peek at something though here. So I'm back on the handout and it's 1033. So I'm, I'm um, kind of pleased with how this went. And I want to go over stuff now that you know more, right? This should be the name of the FLA that you're going to make. Now you could change its name wisely at any point, but it's a good idea to just start out with the correct name, right? This way, when you make a GIF, it will be the same name dot GIF. When you do uh, make Swifts, which would go to the same folder, you know, command return or control enter. It will be this dot swift. So that's convenient. That's the only name I'm going to accept. I just want to say a quick word about fonts. You're limited to the fonts that are on your current computer. If you become the kind of artist who moves from computer to computer, you have to learn about font management so you could take your fonts with you when you travel, you know, um, Right now you're all working at home, so that's not gonna be an issue. For the final project due Monday at midnight, you must choose one of these four quotes only. Peace is its own reward is as easy as what you just did. And it can be beautiful, it can be more beautiful. Do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. Oh guys, include the credits at the bottom. So if it says dash Mahatma Gandhi, include that. You know, 
dash Dalai Lama, I want it included, right? So this short one here, I would probably do this in one, is it's, I'd give one layer, one block. This would be four and five from Mahatma Gandhi. I'd do this in five layers myself, right? Now, look, if you're getting this, because I know some of you right now are just really just quite ready to just jam, <laughs> then, then you just take it however you want to. Just make sure it feels mature and in some way that you can get to it, uh, get it done, you know, on time. This is longer. It would probably take more layers. Uh, some of them are, are uh, still longer. And this last one here is actually one, two, three, four sentences. Uh, one could argue that you'd never see the whole thing. You know, it could be more like, uh, like subtitles feel. It isn't enough to talk about peace, like we just did. And the whole thing leaves. And then one must believe in it. That would be pretty challenging. And uh, I wouldn't take that on unless, uh, you know, you have experience. I know some of you do have related, some related experience. I'm going on here just to mention that I, I made a big deal today about thinking about text blocks. Like not every word deserves a layer. It's going to create more work for you if you see it that way. So here I start breaking it down. This is what we did today in frame one, arrange how they'll look at the end, right? Now that's a weird sentence. In frame one, arrange how they'll look at the end, <laughs> right? When they'll arrive, but that's what you actually did. You did all your design thinking in frame one, right? Um, it's an odd decision. Later on, you move them down the timeline. You know, we did some F6ing. Before you do that, I really recommend you have the handout next to you when you do this. You want to make your graphic symbols. And then it tells you how to get them to their own layers. And then um, it's telling you how to turn on the tweening. You, you go to the first keyframe. Remember that, Kaylin, that's on the, on the timeline, right? Not, in the, not on stage. All right. So your goal, though, is to have the text begin in motion. The audience doesn't see what it is until it reaches their final frames. You know? So one layer at a time, once your tween's turned on, that's when you went ahead down the timeline and f 6 to make the copy down the timeline. You know, that ending keyframe, that holy keyframe at the end that you want to leave alone. All the work's going to be in frame one once the whole timeline's created. This recommends 120 frames. We, we worked with 100 frames today. It really is going to be affected by the length of what you choose, whether, whether you're going to like it or not. It's going to be some hit and miss. And then finally, it tells you to go to frame one and choose the locations. And you could change the alpha if you like, or the tint, or even the size and rotation of your objects. You know, in frame one, you really get to jam and, and try stuff if you've made all your ending frames already. Because you, you know everybody's going to arrive at the station. And frame one is, it gives you all the creative freedom. So here it breaks down other kinds of properties. Tells you that I'll accept a GIF or a SWIF. Guys, listen, I got to say something to you. We've had the weirdest semester in my lifetime so far. And I've had weird ones. And so I'm sure a lot of you feel the same. Really, I've had very weird semesters before. So I'm, I'm, my, my skin is very thick at this stage, like an elephant. But please do yourself uh, the honor of following the instructions closely so I do get your final. The grades are gonna be haywire, your teachers are all gonna be nuts. Uh, many of us have 100 students with 100 finals coming in. Uh, all kinds of individual stories that just cannot possibly be tracked. So I do wanna say something. Um, to those of you who bravely took my class without being able to get the correct software, right? I'm gonna extend uh, an offer, right? If you produce a similar animation in any other program, this semester alone, I'll accept it. So you're gonna take the same phrases. That could be in a video program. Uh, my, my attention recently has been drawn to this free uh, Google animation program, which I'd forgotten existed. And uh, now I'm intending on looking it up because it, it struck me as pretty sophisticated and it's free and it works on online. So maybe Chromebook people could use it. And I, I wish I'd had insight to that sooner, but I, I myself um, don't really know how to use it. I played with it one day. So again, if, if you're feeling that ambitious and you don't have access to Adobe Anime, 
see if you can come up with something clever. Other than that, I'm going to look case by case basis. So look, it's 1040 and I have to start letting people go. Taking another screenshot. I always take several. So I know who's on time, who's not. A um, couple last words. Monday's class is optional, right? So this is what I'm predicting, that some of you will save your file, need more work, have questions for me, show up on Monday. You'll screen share and tell me what's on your mind. Some of you will be like, hey, the whole thing broke. I tried really hard and the whole thing broke. I got to start from scratch. You'll have that day to do it. You could start over. You know, um, I'm still going to juggle however many people come. So no one really can expect me to go through every step again. Um, depending on how many people are there, you know, I'm just, it's going to be support, right? So um, I want to say a couple last things because some of you I'm never going to see again. If you do have to leave now, I understand. I know some of you have uh, classes starting early, earlier than scheduled. <laughs> um, because, uh, is, uh, is it possible to have this session upload online? I will do my best. I'm going to see right after. That's a great idea. I have okay. it set to auto record. So um, my, my okay. record feature has been erratic. So oh, yeah, I, yes, sir. is there like maybe another tutorial that we can watch of what we've just been through? Something, I don't know, shorter or something? Well, it's possible. I mean, you could search Adobe Animate in quotes so it doesn't show you anything else followed with kinetic type tutorial. Okay. You know, kinetic type tutorial. Um, I, you know, I have to say, um, Kareem, I wish that I'd thought to check because this is one of those classes that would have been particularly useful. Um, and I really, I apologize. I'm new to Zoom. The semesters involve so much that's new. It's okay. We're all new to Zoom, so it's understandable. I know, but I wish I wasn't because that, that would, <laughs> most of these classes would have benefited from having been recorded. So I'm going to take a look right after class so I don't forget. Um, if I, if I have any luck with that, I think I'll probably send an announcement to the whole class through um, the announcement feature on Blackboard. It'll show up in your email um, if I have luck with that. So I'm going to do that right after class. I have a break. I have another class, but I have an hour in between. So anyway, let me back up. Make sure your subject line says what it says on the handout so I know what this is, right? You never send a subject line unnamed or my homework. That's way too vague. Make sure you're using the only email that I ever use for this class. It's at the head of the handout. It's also in the homework box. Make sure you're sending me a GIF or a SWIFT if you're having a reason why you prefer the SWIFT. I don't want your FLA. And one reason is I don't have your fonts. You know, So if I open your FLA, they're going to look all wrong on my computer anyway. So you need to send me an output file like I'm the client and I'm getting the finished work. So listen, folks, a last thought about this project. If my steps seem arduous, and they are, you know, or in any way they're not behaving, make something look good. You don't even have to tween. Just by moving the keyframes around, objects will arrive at different points in time. You know, um, think as creatively as you can, because these are, these are strange days. Also, hopefully you'll feel better by Monday morning. <laughs> but if you don't, don't come late Monday morning. All right, I just really got to be clear about this. There's very few excuses for coming late. You know, it's just bizarre to me that anyone thinks that's acceptable when you're all at home. You know, I realize something could happen in the family, which comes first, you know, but there's some people who are late always. It's not respectable. And not when I'm offering to hand support a final project. So anyway, all else fails, come early. I'm not gonna leave you hanging. We'll find some way to get this to fly. Do your absolute best. Anybody have any other questions for me? Those are good ones. Yes. Sure, Michael. My Tell class me. 19 video um, has a zero on. on is, it, is it, did you put it in the Dropbox? Yes. I did, did it on, when we was, I, I screen shared it with you. I, that's okay, but I, I'm not gonna remember anything like that or give a grade based on a screen share. But if it's there, I'm taking a note right now. So Michael, right. I, I have to say, I, what I've been doing is just about each day or, or every other day, I pick a class and go over their emails and drop boxes to make sure I got everything. So I just haven't gotten a second round with you guys yet. So a couple of you uh, uh, might have sent me um, work that isn't showing up on Blackboard. So I'm, Michael, I'm taking a note for you to check. I'm also taking a note so I don't forget because my brain, I'm just shot at the end of the semester. 
to check the video. So yeah, Professor, I did send you an email as well about uh, some work that I put in the Dropbox. Yeah, you know, I saw that um, I got a couple of emails uh, oh, yeah. I from a few of you, and I see there are more showing up, which is fine. The, uh, the, um, the video, um, just be sure that if you send it to me, it's a format that I could read. You know, be absolutely okay. sure that you're not sending me Premiere files or anything like that. You know, that's why my handouts are so detailed, to make sure I get formats that I could give you credit for. Okay. Uh, so, Michael, you put it in the, in the Dropbox, you're saying, not in an email. So, I'm definitely going to check that. I put it on the on the on Google Drive. Perfect. That's what I meant. Yes, the I'm Google Drive. Right now. That's there. perfect. All right. That's great. So I'm going to check that. Anybody else have any questions for me? So folks, I hope I see some of you on Monday. Your grade does not change if you don't make it on Monday. So if I don't see any of you that particular day, uh, Brishna, yeah, can I, is your mic off? I'm going to assume that your mic is off. I just got a. Uh, Hang on a second there, guys. My chat, it just comes and goes. This, this, the format's just so sloppy. <sighs> I agree with that, big sigh. All right, Brista, hang on a second there. Brista's asking me if she could use Flip a Click, an app. Uh, that she uses. Um, Bristol, I want to ask you something. Um, first off, everybody's got questions. If I found anything, I don't have them memorized. Please send me an email today if you want me to double check any grade for you. And I promise I will. Um, you know, because there's too many people, I can't just take notes. The email is the best way for me to be sure. Remember, we have our own unique email. <laughs> so if you send it to that correct email address, the one that's on the handout, uh, I will definitely get it and I'm going to check. This last week's all about checking each of your files to make sure I got everything. Um, about whether you could use another software, as I said a few minutes ago, if you can't get Adobe Animate for any reason, this one semester, I will invite people to come up with a solution in any other program. So that would include flip a click, as long as you can get me the animation that's output. So, Brisson, I hope that helps. You know, um, Really, this is a very odd class. You know, from some teacher's perspective, we should just teach more theory. It's to introduce ideas to people or more playful ways to do stuff. But from other teachers' perspectives, each of you is going into a major that benefits from what happens here. If you go into web design, you're ahead. You go into video, you're ahead. You go into animation, you're ahead. So I'm really hesitant to start using software, especially non-professional software. Um, there's disagreements, though, about whether that is, is the better road or not. We'll see what happens in the future. You already took this class. We have to see what happens going forward. I think your advanced classes are all going to stick with the program, you know, digital classes are going to stick with professional software. But survey classes have different models. We worked with professional software the whole semester, though. Any more questions for me? This would be a great time. Again, if it's detailed about your specific record, you have to send me an email. I'm not gonna check your record. Sure. Yes, sir. The final is just a quote and do what we did today? Yes. That's it? Yes. Oh, all right. I'm glad you see it that way. <laughs> There's a variety of opinions about the difficulty of this project. Any other questions? So guys, um, so Monday's the last day, as I said. My grades are probably going to be due Wednesday. Uh, I'm probably not even going to look after Monday at midnight at emails or uh, the Google Drive folder because that's asking too much for too much last minute um, leeway, right? So again, right now you have a number of days before Monday. Monday, I'm here to tech support the final. Uh, for anybody who I won't see again, I want to say, listen, it's really been a pleasure working with you. And even in this bizarre time, I regret not being in the classroom because it was easier for me to get to know you as individuals because people are a little less shy in the classroom than staring at each other, you know, the way we do here. So that's my only regret because some of you guys are uh, just fascinating people, a variety of, of pasts and, and futures, insights and talents. And, and I'm a talent invested guy, I'll admit, most of my life and career is around uh, the arts. I would have liked to know 
more about that. But so it goes. It's been a pleasure. And with, frankly, I want to say to each and every one of you, I have complete respect for you stepping up to the plate of your time. You know, I'm not sitting there saying, why isn't my time an easier time? Like, what the hell? I would say that to my parents, and they were like, oh, yeah, World War II, Nazis? <laughs> no, that was not an easier time. That was a much worse time. Much, 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 much worse. And that was just the generation before me. So, you know, here we are. How do you deal with your time? Do you deal with it, you know, by praying, you know, by just wishing that it was better or whining that it was better? By the way, don't get me wrong. Complain. You have the right to complain. Just don't let it dominate your life. Cry, scream, jump up and down. But after it's over, you get up and you make a plan. And that's what every generation does. And you guys anyway proven that you're ready to do that. Even some of you couldn't even get the right equipment and would not like take no for an answer. So um, I do want to mention, though, for anyone in here who gets a grade you don't like, please check the link on my handout uh, to the no credit option. You know, I'm too overwhelmed with getting my classes taught as well as I can and, and treating my students with as much respect for their choices as I can to know the administration side of this. But I, I do believe that if you get a grade you don't like, in, um, I personally, I wouldn't go with a B minus and choose no credit, you know, because you still gonna have to pay for the class again to take it again, you know, because you're like, oh, that's not good enough for me. But I think they're accepting that. It, it's really made for people who failed classes or got Ds or grades they just can't abide by. So they get a pass sort of, you know, in terms of their grade point. Why should your grade point be screwed by, by uh, events if you were caught without the right equipment? Um, so take a look at the no credit, figure out your best. I'm going to look at everyone's grades with a real open mind this semester. Uh, I'm still high performers will get the highest grade. Uh, other people will, will get padding because you deserve that much in a strange time. All right. Hope to see some of you on Monday. I'm officially ending this class wildly late <laughs> and I'll, I'll see all year around again individual questions about did you get this did you get that they the they're really best by email uh, i don't really want to um you know make people wait where i look over individual individual records you know in fact i'm going to take a quick look right after class with my little list of things to do for for this group uh you may hear back from me before you know it all right i guess i'm going to end the meeting does anyone need me privately for anything that an email just won't do? All right, then. Folks, I'll see a lot of you on Monday. The rest of you, I wish you great creative lives. Hey, bye, Professor. See you guys. It has been great. All right, thank you. Oh, thank my you. pleasure. My pleasure. Really good. It's been good to work with all of you. I, I always do the slow goodbye, right? Just because some people have things to say and they're hoping to be the last one in the room, so to speak. Uh, not at all. I sent you. I see my email there, so I guess I that'll saw. be. It. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to open it just yet. So, what kind of file is it? Is it? It's just um, a, a link for the the video. So it's online. Yeah, it's on. It's unlisted right now on, on YouTube. So I just sent it there. That's fine. Yeah. So look, I'll, I'm telling you. Look, Shaq, I got to say, like, we, I might not have agreed in every instant with some of your arguments, but by and large, I completely agreed with your your um way of seeing your predicament and you know you took you were very mature about the whole thing so i really want to support it i i honestly believe if i was to guess whatever your path is you're going to succeed on it because right? you're not knocked over easily and honestly maturity is so much about that how easily are you knocked over you know and you're not knocked over easily so I i'm going to definitely give it a hard look and um i have a very open mind about yeah, thank you so again, you know, we'll see. You know, I didn't accept the video game stuff, right? And I hope you understood why. And if you did, then I probably will accept this one. It means you, you probably chose something. Like you described to me, it's that dialogue, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, it's wanna... just a simple simple stock scene that came with um, the programming that my professor, my professor sent me. Um, so for that class, I just used something else. Um, and I just used this one for uh, this class. That's perfect. That's perfect. I mean, most of us who teach video teach with as much stock footage we could, as we can find. We surely don't have, you know, not able to go out and shoot for our classes. So, so that, that's, that's perfectly viable. Um, Marigata, I see you there. Are you there? I mean, last time your name showed up, I never saw you. I never heard from you. I asked you to speak or to chat me and you did neither. 
So I really have, I don't, I can't quite tell what your intentions are. If, if, uh, if you're uncomfortable communicating me in this forum, be sure to send me an email because I haven't heard from you in quite some time. So I, I don't know what your goals are. I'm on everyone's side, you know, regardless. Dennis, how are you over there? Oh, Professor, I'm good. Well, I have some um, questions to ask you about something. Sure. Is it, is, uh, is it, can, we, can you ask me right here? Is that all right? Mm, that's fine. I'm just going to ask you, like, um, I'm going to try to do my best on this project because I have an old version of a computer and it's slow. Uh -huh. Like, when I try to open the anime, it's like, it's different, yeah. like, different from yours. And I'm trying to, like, put it as the same thing as yours. Like, the layout is different. So, it's kind of confusing to use it. Well, about the layout, that I could show you something. Um, I want you to just take a look for a second. I, I, I just turned off my screen share. I'm going to turn it back on. So just give me a minute. You know, that's, that's fair what you're saying, really. You know, in class, I walk around. I could see if people's layouts are different. So it's taken me some time to figure out how to negotiate it here. In Animate, the window menu <clears throat> not only has most of the palettes, like the library and tools and all the usual stuff but it has this way down here called workspaces and okay. many programs have this option the one i've been using when i teach in class is called essentials now oh. um, some people on laptops are set to small screen um which is probably okay but i'm just not sure that it's got everything each of these is a slightly different layout if you're already in essentials you could always click reset essentials just in case you move stuff around and then it should imitate this layout you're currently seeing. Oh, because mine was on basics, so I think. Uh, I see. Did you reset different. it just now? Yeah, as loading, just it's slow my computer, so it's really? taking a while to load, like uh, like three minutes to load anime. So. Gosh. So is, have you used Animate with me before? Is this the mm. first time? This is the first time using Animate. So um, you had a bunch of absences then? Mm. So, no, no, I've been using Anime, but. I mean, it's like, it takes a slow time to upload the... So you are here for the classes that I taught? Yeah. And, and even though your computer's slow, it, it, they let you, you manage to work along to some degree? Yes. It would take me like three hours just to do some stuff because Good it's kind of freezes. It's like, it, it gets so complicated. I get frustrated on it. I so trying to click on it, it doesn't want to... Hey, Dennis, can yeah. I ask you, what kind of computer is it? Is it Mac or Windows? It's Mac. It's like the old version, one of like 2015 Macs. It has a, gotcha. you know, the, when it comes to disk on it, yeah, those. So, you know, um, you, should, you should throw out as much stuff as you can. I would open up the hard drive. You know, I'd, I'd find your way at the, the most root level and just start throwing stuff out. If it's an old computer, there's probably like loads of stuff you don't need. And the more weight in the computer, like literally old files, old photos, stuff you don't need, okay. they're all going to slow down the computer. All right, I'm going to try to do that right now. So that's one thing that would help, you know, just carefully throw that stuff away or put it on a portable drive if you have one. The other thing I'd say is never work with more than one or two programs open. So don't have anything extra open. Like in my class, you would have the browser and Zoom and Animate, but not yeah. anything else because that's going to slow the computer also. You keep the minimum stuff open and have a clean computer, that'll help. Yeah. The other thing I want to ask you is, are you in the habit of shutting down and restarting, or do you just leave it on? Um, I've been, like, leaving it on, but some, last night, I, I shut it down, and when I switch out, I definitely came a little to the class, because it was taking a little while to load into Google and to the web, to the Zoom meeting. So. Oh, no. So, uh, again, start shutting it down once a day, at least, is a good idea, because that mm -hmm. also will help it speed up. And All then, right. lastly... I would look for some free Mac virus software, you know, because there's plenty of free Mac virus software. Because what happens is there's little programs that sometimes called spyware that um, it's it sounds vicious, but it's you know, and it it's it's not a good thing, but it's just learning certain things um, for businesses and it's running programs on your computer. I know that sounds ominous, but regardless of whether it's ominous or not, it does slow down the computer. Okay. So like, you know, like once a year, you know, this advice by the way is helping me because my computer's acting up. I have to do all these things I just told you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to delete stuff. I've been restarting the computer like twice a day lately. All right. um, I do think I'm going to have to run some kind of spyware. So either virus software or spyware, 
It may be one program, something free. Uh, you right. may see a difference right away. True. So look, and the other thing I'd like to say to you is choose the shortest, choose something short from the list of quotes, you know? All right. You know, the, the, so the recording is going to be on the Blackberry so I can go over it because I was going to confuse. Like, I'm going to check right now. So um, did you come to class on time today? Uh, I did like, I don't know, I think I'm on 9, 6, 17 right now because I was oh, that's fine. in. So. That's fine. So um, I'm going to look into that. So Dennis, listen, I want to say, do your best. And even if you do it without the tweening, you know, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, like even if, uh, even if I had turned off all these tweens, uh, you know, earlier, earlier on and had just been left with the original frames, it would have, you know, would have looked something like this as an animation. Mm -hmm. It would have looked like peace is a full-time job. You know See, what that's I mean? what the part I got to. I got confused. And, and, and you know uh, what? If you could do something equivalent to that and, and, you know, you choose the right colors and nice fonts, you can get a decent grade anyway. Okay. So, you know, take it as far as you can. Just try to make it feel like something real, even if it doesn't have all this detail. You know, like I went in a lot of detail to show choices, but I'm not requiring them. Fades and slides, it would be nice. But other than that, even if the timing is such that I'm seeing one at a time, the scattered timing. You know, like I said, good colors, good fonts, whatever you can come up with. Yeah, I'm gonna do my right. best to give you. In. So listen, so, let me go yeah. check on that um, video and see if I, I uh, really have to master that that option and see if the video shows up. I think you send an email or something. Uh, if it's like, I'm gonna send it, I'll, I'll send you notice in in, in in an email. That's right. All right, all right. that's cool. Right? That's cool. Okay. Okay. All right, nice to talk to you, Dennis. Uh, all right, bye-bye. Marty, are you there or not? All right. You've not chatted me or anything, so I, I really don't know what, you know, what your goal is by, you know, just leaving the computer. It feels like you're just leaving the computer. All right. Class is over.